All right, so Visual Studio starts like this, okay? Um, to create a new project, you start from here, okay? Create a new project. We don't want to do that. I just want to bring up Visual Studio and show you the options. We'll go through all those things soon, okay? So continue without code, and that's going to start Visual Studio, which is here. Now, what you need to do is this. Tools, Options, Text Editor, All Languages, Tabs, and Select Insert Spaces, set the tab size to 3. Okay? You can set it to 2, 2 if you want to. 2 or 3. Don't make it 4, don't make it 5. Insert Spaces. You can click on Smart Indenting over there too. It's a cool thing to have. So click on smart, smart Indenting. Because Smart Indenting doesn't work for everything, it conflicts with, with each other. You just select over here and click OK. So it's going to apply it. And then your Visual Studio is set. They haven't done this, that in school computers. So every time you open Visual Studio, do this first and then start your work. What happens? Why we don't like tabs? OK? How does the tab work? The tab works like this. When you have a file, so let me actually create a new project now. So, new project. So, the project that we usually do is a console application. It's an empty project console application. You see that? Run code in Windows Terminal, print Hello World by default. If I do it like that, it actually creates a Hello World for me, so I can work with it. Or you can just create an empty project and then add stuff to that. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to create a, a, an empty project. Next. When you are creating an empty project, it's already in that video in the YouTube thingy, so you'll see, and you're going to see this one too. So when you create a project, first of all, you've got to make sure that this checkbox is checked. Okay? Uh, Visual Studio is an environment that is set to create a solution. What is a solution? A solution is set of projects. So let's say you are creating an e-commerce program. Your e-commerce program needs a storage, uh, uh, inventory uh, application. It needs uh, a point of sales application. It needs a shopping cart application. Three different things. So you have three projects. You put those three projects in one solution. In Seneca, we are not doing that. We have one program printing Hello World. So we don't have five projects in the same place. Because of that, Check that, which means it's not going to create a directory for the solution and then a directory for the project in there. Okay, one less click is a beautiful thing to do. Okay, so put that one and only create it where you want to. Now, for that, create it wherever you want. So I'm creating an OP244 now, as you see, and uh, so I'm going to browse. And in there, I'm going to go to OP244 NABC. That's the repository that you just saw on GitHub. I cloned it in here. And in here, I'm going to select the folder, and I'm going to name it 01 dash. What is the date? It's September. Sorry. It's September 3rd, right? And I'm going to click Create. So it's going to create an empty console C, C++ console application for me. Three years later, four years later, five years later, there you go. Lots of stuff are open. Server Explorer, Toolbox. And remember, all these things, close them because you don't need them. The only thing you need for now is the Solution Explorer. And maybe later on when we start object or the object orientation is class view. Okay? The rest of these are nothing. You don't need them. Okay? So, do that, and now I'm going to create, add a new file over here. You have done this in IPC 144 55,000 times. So add new item. I'm going to call it prg.cpp and include IO stream int main. Oh, sorry, my apologies. Um, C out. Oh, that's too big. C out. Testing. 
one, two, three, and and L return zero. So that's my program. If I want to compile the program, oh, using namespace std, using namespace std, that's how C++ prints, okay? C out is an object, I'm gonna talk about it, we're gonna see your inserting testing one, two, three into C out, the console out, okay, object, and you say end the line. Okay, so you are inserting stuff into it, and it's in a namespace called std. Don't worry, it sounds gobbledygook, we're going to run them all. No problem. No problem with this. Don't worry. Okay? So now if I run this beautiful program of mine, okay, three years later, compiles and runs, and it says testing one, two, three. Are we okay with this? Testing one, two, three. And it, and it exited with code zero. You see that zero? That's your friend. If there is anything but zero over here, you did something wrong. Careful. You know what that code zero is over there? You know what code zero, where it comes from? Uh, huh? Return zero, yeah, so if I, if I return, that's what it's going to return to me. So if I compile, now it's gonna exit with, exit with code one, two, three, four, zero, okay? So why I said zero is your friend? Because you're returning zero. If it's an abnormal termination, another error code is going to come up, which means your return zero didn't happen, which means your program ter terminated uh, prematurely. All right? Goody, goody. Now, tabs. We were talking about tabs. How do tabs work? Okay? When you put a tab, tab doesn't mean certain amount of spaces. Tab means jump to next tab position. So tab size changes. If you set the tab, use the tab character to say four, it means there are invisible columns every four characters that you pass through. When you press tab, if you are at column one, it jumps to four. If you are at column two, it jumps to four. If you are at column three, it jumps to four. If you are at column four, it jumps to eight. If you are at column five, it jumps to eight, and so on and so forth, okay? Now, when you move your code from here to matrix, that four is eight. Just imagine what happens to your code. Suddenly everything goes banana. All the indentation and nice thing that you have done will go cuckoo. And then you edit it on that one and everything goes bananas again. Okay? So, again, insert spaces over here. And I have the video, uh, that the link over there, how to even set VI not to use tabs and use spaces. Like that, your code always remains organized. Are we okay with this? And whenever you code, you see your code is going bananas and you want to fix it, you can always go edit, advanced, format document, boom, and it formats it for you. It sets all the indentation and all the stuff properly. Of course, it's not going to do a perfect job, but at least it's not going to go bananas. Are we okay with this? That's why we do not use tab, okay? Uh, converting tabs based in Visual Studio, it's the same thing since 1994, so it doesn't make any difference. It's the same thing. I put an example for Code Lite 2 to see that all integrated development environments have this. You can go to their option and Google it and find out how to do it. Pro Git book, okay? Pro Git book is a book that if you read the first and second chapter, you're good till the end of Seneca College thingy that you have, okay? And they're not too big. Read that to understand what Git is. It's good for your health, okay? Do it at night. If you want to fall asleep, two pages of that, and you're going to go <laughs> sleep like crazy, okay? So do that. And it's an open book on internet, so you can read it. Put it on your tablet, cell phone. Installing Git on Windows 10, I'll change that to the new one. Installing Tortoise Git, I'll change that one too probably on the break. And how to playlist over there has all this stuff, and lecture videos are gonna appear over here. My schedule is right over here, and you can see exactly where I am. If you miss a class, go to another one, okay? Um, I don't mind if you're jumping with between classes, but don't make it constant. 
because like you see there, there's just enough for you. If like five people suddenly show up over here because they want to go early today, I'm not going to have enough computers. If that's the case, then I'm going to throw out the people who are not in the class or not registered. So if for like occasionally, if you have to go to the other one, fine. Or if you want to do it permanently, tell me. So I will notify you that if the seat is not available, then you have to leave. OK? Uh, find the classrooms. It took me. 45 minutes to find the classrooms uh, everyone's in school so it's a good idea to do it um, so that's that uh, office hours I'll set the office hours um, big blue button is your friend remember I'm gonna have I'm gonna have online lectures so if I see something is interesting and good to know I'm gonna put an online site for this, uh, lecture online lectures are usually from 9 at night till 12 9 to 12 o'clock at night or 10 to 12 Okay, and whoever says, oh, I, don't want, I want to sleep, I want to sleep too, but I'm doing it. So, be it. Yes, Patrick. Pardon me? Go to another computer. It's a bad computer. I don't know what. Or, or uh, restart it. I have no idea. It, oh, sign in. Sign in. Sign in with your student account. Sign in, and you sh I think you should be fine. I don't think it's going to ask for the license. Let's see if it works. You, you opened it in 2019, right? Yes. Okay. Sign in and tell me what happens. I'm hoping that it's going to be fixed. It's not going to ask for the license. So it's going to take you to Seneca. And yeah. So the question was, uh, uh, when, it, when she wants to start Visual Studio, it asks for a license. Now let's see if it's going to still ask it after she signs in. We'll find out. If it doesn't change your computer, and I'm going to mention that that happened in class. Okay? This, this is the data we are doing this to make sure. And if you have a computer in front of you and you have a laptop, please turn it on. Make sure your computers are on. Uh, I did try it, but it expired. Absolutely. Uh, try to sign in. Yeah, I signed in. Even, if, even when you. No, I'm signed in, but like, yeah, your license has expired. Okay. All right. So I'm going to let them know. Yes. Um, oh. So okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna put all these things up. Okay, I'm gonna put all these things up. So you cannot see Santa Cops. Change your computer to something else immediately to another one, and try to log in. And if you have the same problem in another one, it means your account has a problem, which means you send an email to Service Desk. Okay, service desk at SenecaCollege.ca, and in that one you mentioned what, what went wrong. I was in the lab and I couldn't see my apps, yada, yada, this is my ID and password from your Seneca account. So if you change, if you change the computer and the problem remains the same, it means trouble is with your account. Okay, they have to fix it. So please move to another computer and see if uh, it gets fixed. And if you see a computer beside you, please turn it on. Turn all the computers on. Thank you. We put it at the back. I hope it's not because something's wrong with it. Yeah, turn all the computers on so when uh, somebody has a problem, uh, we can fix it. Let me pause this so we don't have boring stuff. So big blue button is your friend, which means if you go to uh, Blackboard and log in as a student. So if I log in over here, I'm not a student, but I'm going to log in as myself. It's the same thing as you. So I'm going to log in over here. Uh, Barda does. So email Lou. Let me make the course available. This is a uh, so course available. NAA, we don't want lab. NAB, let me make it available. There you go. Now you can see your course. And C2. Now you can see your section. OK? So for lab submissions, you have to go by section A. When you are writing a test, you can write A, B. It doesn't matter. But lab submission goes by section A. So why did it, why did it go to Grade Center? Let me just see what's going on here. Seneca Blackboard one more time. I don't know, it's as slow as, oh, there you go. 
Oh, because I put the wrong thing, I guess. There we go. There we go. So if you log in, you're going to see that it's there. How to go to Big Blue Button? Click on the section that you're enrolled in. Then, for some reason, it's not as it's best. Usually, it's not like this. Like in past two, three years, I haven't seen ever something like this happening. So uh, if it's slow, my apologies. Hopefully, they're going to fix it. Anybody, uh, did you click? Did you go in? Did, uh, you went into an, so if, I'm waiting for my announcements to come up. So yeah, you could actually go to NAB. All right. Uh, let me stop it and go in again. So Seneca, learn. N A B. You click on tools in le at left, and it's going to go to the next page, which all the tools are going to show up. The left one at the top is big blue button. Left, big blue. Click on the big blue button. Okay, and you can click on launch. It's not going to go in there because it's going to say uh, this room has not been configured yet. Oh, I'm in there. So I'm doing it right now. So I'm going to uh, click on big blue button. And in here, I'm going to say launch. I'm going to call it OOP244. OOP Come on. OOP244. Uh, um, this one is, I'm going to call it, because we are in section A, I'm going to call it A, uh, online lecture. Lecture. Now I'm going to put stuff over here telling you uh, in, in the welcome message to use headsets. Please have headsets available. Make sure your headset is connected. You're not using your speakers for the feedback and yada, yada, yada. I'm going to put all those things. And I'm going to say students must wait until uh, an instructor joins the session. Uh, and session may be recorded. So I can actually record on big blue button. So as soon as I say join session, I'm logged into Big Blue Button. Now you can do it too. So if I click on microphone over here, it's going to go for an echo test. Then I'm going to say, let me see if I have one, two, three. If I can hear myself, it means it's good. So I click on yes. And now I am in. Don't do that. OK, you, you don't uh, join audio. Just uh, but what like I see right now that uh, Arsham, Hussein, and Sayyid, they joined in as listen only. Never do that. No, 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 no. Now as listen only is good. But in real life, always put microphone. Whoa. Let me mute myself. There you go. So somebody has the microphone on their computer. You do, you do don't you? Okay, let me bring it down. All right, that, it's, it happens. This is the reason I gave you a perfect example right now why you need to have a headset, especially when you are at school sitting with your friend or you're in a busy lab and everybody's talking. That's going to be extremely annoying to others. This happens because by itself, it can fix the feedback. But when someone else's computer's audio is pick, picked up, it's going to keep rotating it, and it's going to be an endless loop in, in audio. And that's what happens. That was an endless loop in audio. OK? And it keeps going like that. So you've got to make sure that you have a headset. And you can always use your, uh, your phone headset. It works perfectly. The microphone is detected and everything these days, all notebooks work the same way. So use your microphone or use a USB headset. And you're fine. And doing this, I can share my screen. I can see your screen. I can uh, uh, have a slides over here, explain to you how things happen. And we can have all the three sections together at the same time online. And you can have audio, video, everything. So you can even have the video shared if you want to. There you go. That's my ugly face. Voila.
Okay, so if I start sharing, all of you are going to actually see my face up there. Uh, as you see, it's actually starting now. You can actually see me on your, on your big blue button at the top. It's going to show up, and that's me over there. That was me now. There you go. Woohoo! Okay, so, and so it's something like that. And, and it's good for you to know that what you see partially is built by students at Seneca. So this, this was actually a grant that I was doing for six years with Blindside Networks at Ottawa. And students hired from Seneca did lots of work on this, especially the HTML5 client that you see. OK? All right? This is an amazing thing. So use it. It's with pride. Uh, it's something that we have done. OK? So yeah. So to, to push my information up to GitHub, first I have to add it to the local repository. Remember, Git is, works like this. Git works on cloning. And you know exactly what cloning is, right? To make something identical of the other. So you have a repository on GitHub. You clone it on your local computer. Now you have two repositories. You change something in, in your own repository, then you're going to say sync it with GitHub. Push the information up to GitHub. And then pull from GitHub if you need to. So that's how it works. So upload and download between repositories. So in here, I'm going to say add. First, you have to add the stuff that you just added to your repository so Git knows these are actually stuff that you want to add. And as you see, it's prg.cpp and w1 in lab that I just created last night. So it's added. Now I'm going to say commit. And for the commit, it always needs a description of what you're committing. So I'm going to say over here debugging, debugging stuff, whatever. OK? And then I'm going to click on commit. Now push, so that's committed. Now when I do push, it sends it back up to master, which is where? It's GitHub. So it's going to push it back up to you. Oh, it says it's not clean because I added something over there. See, it wants to push the stuff to uh, GitHub up there, but it noticed that it is out of sync with this one. So it first tell, uh, tells me, bring in the changes before I can put things back up. So I'm going to do a pull now. So I'm going to do a pull now. Now it's going to bring the changes. The changes are those readme stuff that I changed. So it brings it back down. Now I have everything here. Now I'm going to say push again. And voila, now it went up. So if it's out of sync, it lets you know. OK? So now you can actually clone it. OK? So go to OP244 NABC repository in OP244 organization. So it should be at top. It says OP244 NABC notes. You see that? OK? And in there, there should be a 01 September 03. I should have put a, an A over there because your section, uh, or uh, what was our section again? A. So I'm going to rename this thing later on to A uh, in the break, because you have to know this is section A. We have another section coming in. I don't want it to get mixed up. So if I, and, it, and as you see, it is debugging stuff that are set. And you have a W1 in lab over here. So I want you to clone this. And after you clone it, you're going to open it up, and you're going to see this. OK? So bring it up, uh, open it up into Visual Studio. First, clone it. If you don't know how to clone, just download zip for now. But bring it into your computers and open it up so you can see this. Meanwhile, I'm going to do something else in here. So you do that, then I'm going to tell you what's going on. How many of you brought the local in your computer? Uh, please don't bring it because you ha I want to change something and you have to do it again. Okay? Give me a second. I want to change something first.
There you go. Okay, saved it. Now, please, uh, let me just push it up. So, as you see, now I changed something in that lab one. Let me show it to you. Okay, you see that? Now I'm going to push it. So, I'm going to go right click. I'm going to say commit. I'm going to say debugging um, code. Okay, and commit. Push. Now it's updated up there. If you have cloned it and it wasn't download zip, if it's download zip, you have to delete it and download it again. Okay? If it's download zip, you have to delete it and download it again. If it's not download zip, just right click on the repository and tortoise git pull. And it brings the changes for you. Okay? Got it? So if you have zipped it, now bring it and open it up. We want to try something in here. And open it up. I want everybody to have their uh, Visual Studio open with this solution open like this. So open the solution. Perfect. Yes. Open the solution. You can do it on local computers too if you have, but it has to be Visual Studio. It cannot be anything else. You cannot have Xcode, okay? Because so, I'm going to teach something over here that's completely different. I know you're opening it on Xcode, but I'm gonna, I mentioned actually in the workshop that if you are using anything else than Visual Studio and the platform that we have, the help will be limited because seriously, Mac is against my religion, so I don't, <laughs> I don't, use, I don't use it. I'm coming. I don't use Mac computer. All right, so again, you clone it, and then after you have it, you uh, open up Visual Studio, and it comes like this. Now, what I want you to do, like you can do it at home too. I'm going to leave that thing on the, on the repository, so go home and do it. Um, and I'm recording it. Hopefully, uh, you can see it at home. What have I done? Okay? So, if you can follow me now, good. If you can't, just see what's happening, and then... Uh, you got to be able to do it at home. So remove that prg.cpp from here. So click on remove. Remove. Uh, don't save. It doesn't matter. Okay. And then add existing item. So you write, oops, I clicked on the cancel. Sorry, I clicked on the wrong thing. Okay, so one more time. Wow. Okay, delete. That's one of the things in visual stuff. You click on one thing, 55 different things are going to show up. Anyways, so right click on source files, add existing item, and add w1nlab.cpp. I modified a few things over there for it not to work quite right. So we can see how we can debug with Visual Studio 2019 or any Visual Studio. So if I run the code right now, so if I do Control F5 and run it without debugging, Control F5. If you don't know what the shortcuts are, go to debug and take a look. F5, start debugging. Control F5, start without debugging. Step into, step over. We're going to go through all those things. As you see, these lines are not set properly. You see that? It's supposed to align with this one, right? And this cursor is supposed to be one forward, not here. Because it's setting it, it has to be one space over here. So this is not at the right place. That is not at the right place. So if I say set number of samples and I put over here three, as you see, this, these lines are not set properly. We have to fix that. And the prompt is not supposed, it, ha it has to have a space between the prompt and the cursor. We want to fix those. So if I click over here three again, oh, uh, two to enter samples. So this is a statistic thing. So as you see again, so we are going, and this is not good either. Maybe we can fix this too. You see that? So the column is supposed to, actually it's fine. This is fine. 
the cursor should go one further ahead, but it's okay. Uh, maybe we can fix that too. So in here, I'm going to go two, three, four, five. That's one. The other one, I'm going to put four, five, six, seven. So these are the samples that I have. I'm five, six, seven, eight. And now the samples are in. I'm going to say print the graph for it. And it's printing. And as you see, the problem with the lines are everywhere. So whatever is drawing these lines is making a boo-boo. OK? I have to fix that. And also, everything is back over here coming. So everything is not quite right in here. It should go a little further to the front, right? So these are the things that I have to investigate, see if I can fix. How do I do that? I open the thing, and I'll try to walk through. So all those walkthroughs that you do are for this purpose, OK? You always start, the, if you have written the code yourself, good. You all pro, most probably can kind of know where the problem is. Because I wrote the code, I know I have a function called line. And that line function of mine is drawing the line in an incorrect length, right? So I'm going to go to that line function. So I'm going to try to find the line function. There we go. This is the line function. You can right click on the name of the function and say go to definition. And it jumps where the function is. Now, I will put a stop sign right beside the line. I'm saying stop the execution. Probably somebody wanted to show it and put this marker over here. <laughs> stop the execution right at this line. OK? And now I can start running the code using the debugger. How do I do that? I can start with debugging. The other time I started without debugging, that was control F5. Start with debugging is F5. When I hit F5, see what happens. It runs the code and stops right over there. So I'm going to bring this over here at left. And at right side, I'm going to say show the output. Now I'm going to align it properly so I can see where I'm going. And diagnostic tools, too rich for our blood. Close it. And anything you do, Visual Studio remembers it. Next time you go to debugging mode, it's going to go away. So whatever you see, I have no idea what it is, close it. You can open it later on if you want. Diagnostic tools, I don't care. Call stack, I don't want. Breakpoints, sure, maybe. Exception, yada, yada. Anyways, I'm going to bring, I'm going to take this at least not to show it and just bring it down so I can bring it up when I want. As you see, his execution is standing right at the beginning of this one. So now I can start printing these line by line. How do I do that? If you click on debug, you see it says step into, step over. Step into does exactly what it says. So it means if what you are at is a function, is going to go into it. Step over, it means run this line over. So if it's a function, it will completely ignore it and run it as one line and whatever the outcome is. So if you are sure the function is working properly, you do F10. Step over. If you don't know if the function is working properly, you do F11. Go into the function and start walking through. So essentially, it walks through the code for you. Now, I'm going to press F10 to see how these things are happening. So F10, and as you see, a plus is printed in here. OK? Then it goes from I up to N, a less than N, and it prints dashes. Right? OK? If I want to see it properly, it's a good idea to make it a little bigger so I can see. There you go. Then it checks if the label is not null. It goes back, so go back brings the cursor back, OK? And prints the label. What is the label? Is welcome to SDS Cenograph. So go back brings the cursor back. Do I want to see how it works? If it's yes, I'll press F11. It actually goes in it, see? It went in it. So essentially, that's a loop printing backslash Bs. Backslash B was backspace, right? So it keeps bringing the cursor back and stops right over there. Now it goes out. 
and prints the label. Now it goes to new line. You see, everything is shown step by step. So most probably, this loop is printing too much. And I need to focus on that. Let's go to the next one and see if that's the case. So I'll go. If I want to, I can press F5 again. If I press F5, it runs again until it comes to line again. If I press F10, it goes to the next line. So I'm going to press F10. As you see, it was that line that was executing. Line 75, welcome to yada, yada, yada. Okay? So now it's going to go in. While not done, so the loop is happening. Then it's going to say switch to the value that menu is returning. Do I want to see how the menu run? If yes, I press F11 to go inside. I will press F11. It goes to menu. In menu, it prints a line for 28 characters. Do I want to see how line works? No, I did it already. I know why it works. I just want to see if it works all right or not. So I'm pressing F10 and, oh, sorry, F. Yeah, because it has a stop sign, it goes in there. I want to get out of it. I want to execute the whole function and get out. How do I do? I have to step out. So I'll go to debug. Step out is Shift F11. So I'll go over here, do Shift F11. It executes the whole function and jumps out. Now I'm going to do another F10 and another F10. That's the one. So I see now my line is printing two extra things, dashes, right? I'm going to fix it right now. How can I make this thing to go two less than what it is right now? N minus two. N minus two. OK, so I'm going to say I want to go two less. I'm going to make it two less. Minus two, OK? Now I press F10 again. Now the compiler checks. If it can recompile and regenerate the code, it will. So from now on, line is going to run in a new way. If it can't, it's going to tell you I can't. Then you have to stop and start the debugging from scratch. Let's see if it worked. So now it's back on line again. Is it? Yeah, and it want to draw something underneath, so I'm going to do Shift F11. Bingo, it's fixed. You see? It went over there. So now it's fixed. Now the next thing I had problem with was the cursor was not going to the right place. So let's do F10 and go through it. So that's that. It goes over here. It goes over here. Now it prints that. Now it's going to bring the cursor back to here, correct? So. Probably this is the one that is having some, have some problem. Now, if you remember, every place that I, was ha I had the cursor beside the problem, all of them were back. If it was only one of them, you fix the value that is passed to go back. If all of them is wrong, it means your function is wrong. That's the beauty of writing functions. Because you fix one thing, and all the code gets fixed. Now I want to see how this thing is working. I press F11. Go inside. It looks OK. But it appears that it goes one extra, correct? How do I make it to go one less? Either minus one or remove that equal sign over there. Instead of less than or equal, just make it less than. I shouldn't have made it less than or equal. So I'll fix that. I press F10, it recompiles. If it can't fix it, it will. Now I'm going to say get out. I don't want to go through the loop one by one. So execute the whole thing, fixed. It's right over there. Now I want to execute the whole thing and see how it works. I'm going to go remove that breakpoint. Now I'm going to press F5. But remember, because you are debugging, it's not going to stop the window at the end. If you want the program to stop at the end of the program, you have to actually go put a stop sign or a breakpoint at the end of the main function. So where is the main function? Come on, main function. So this is the main function. I'm going to come over here and say stop before returning 0. 
Now I'm going to press F5. Or press play on this. So one of these is play. Which one is that? Which one is this one is debugging? There you go. Continue. You can either do this or press F5. Okay? Now it's actually running and waiting for me to enter the value. So I'm going to say set uh, number of samples. I'm going to say three. And I'm going to say enter samples. I'm going to say, and as you see, now it's moved to the proper place. So it's actually running properly. Now I'm going to say 40. 50 and 60, let's say. Now I'm going to say print the graph for those values. And it's done. Everything is working properly. Problem is debugged. Now I can submit it to FARDAT. OK? So this is how you do debugging. And you have to get used to this a lot. Right now, it was just the matter of something not being printed properly. Soon you're going to do dynamic memory allocation, which means you're going to take over the operating system's management of memory. You're going to do all the stuff yourself. And that's the part that debugging is very difficult. And you actually want to see where the problem is actually coming up. For that, this is a very good practice. All right? Are we OK down to here? Now, this has been recorded, so I'm going to post it as a lecture for today. You can go through it and see how it works. Again, the next day that you're coming in, these are the things that you need to do. Uh, I'm going to take a picture at the end. I'm going to take a picture of the thing and, and post all the things that I drew over here uh, uh, on announcements. So you're going to have a welcome announcement from me with all the things in it, and, you're going to, and I'm going to ask it to send you as an email, too. Um, oh, another thing. Another thing, uh, I, uh, I create a group that is the group of my class, OK? In that group, what I will do is to set every person who is in my class the email to be set. And I create a rule. If the group email is coming from this group, put it in this directory. If you send it from your private account, hopefully after your graduation, I'm going to respond to it. OK? So make sure all the emails you are sending to me comes from Seneca College. And then it's going to get redirected. And if you look at my emails, you will see what I mean. Like if you look at my Outlook, if you look at my Outlook, I just want to show it to you to see what I'm talking about. I don't have the inbox at top. I have OP244 as the first thing. So I see that first, OK? If you don't send it to me, it goes into inbox. And inbox is a mishmash of 55,000 messages that I'm not going to see, OK? Make sure you send it from your account. Are we good? Are we OK, one? Are we OK, two? Any questions? Any question, one? Any questions, two? No, if I were you, I would go home and do it myself. I did not, I, did, I opened it up and I edited it, but I'm not pushing it into the repository. So go and try to do this yourself and see if you can pinpoint something. Exercise. Exercise, practice, practice. Practice makes perfect, okay? Uh, what I wanted to say? Yes. Tab size. Oh, tab size. I want to say be consistent only. But I'm not going to do that. You are too yeah. kindergartenish right now to decide what is a tab size. So two or three, OK? Um, and later on in OP345, I'm going to say, make sure your tab size is consistent with me. Because I'm going to do two or three, I want, you to, I want you guys to be two or three, OK? So set the tab size on all editors to two or three before you do anything. Anything else? All right, let me stop the recording and tell you something.